Everyone knows Kevin Durant. By all rights, he's a basketball superstar, a true legend of the game, a two-time NBA champion, second pick in the 2007 NBA draft, multiple-time MVP, one of the greatest scorers we've ever seen, and a movie star. Okay, he's only really starred in one movie, but still, a movie star. This guy has it all, but we are not here to talk about him. We are here to talk about his relationship with Michael Beasley and their history together. If you do not know who Michael Beasley is, keep watching the video. I guarantee you, it'll be worth your while. But before we go on, make sure that you are subscribed to the video, put on notifications, and drop a like below for the culture. Without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. Michael Beasley, like Kevin Durant, was a second pick draft for the NBA in 2008, one year after Durant was drafted. But while Durant hit the NBA like a storm, Beasley's impact was a lot less impressive. While Durant averaged 20.3 points per game while shooting 43% field goal, Beasley averaged 13.9 points per game while shooting 47% field goal, both in their first seasons. So if you're wondering why we're comparing both players, it's because they both literally are very similar and had a similar journey to the NBA. So let's rewind back to when they were kids. Beasley and Durant first met when they were 11 years old, and it's kind of a funny story. On the basketball court, Michael Beasley was awkward and clumsy as a kid. He went to the St. Pleasant Activity Center just outside Washington, D.C. to try out, and while everyone there recognized his raw talent, they also saw that he lacked focus. He was unruly and difficult to coach, and Beasley was told to leave the gym after only a few hours of practice with the boys' team. He left, but not before stealing the team's pizza. Yep, you heard that right. Michael Beasley stole the team's pizza when they threw him out, and that is the first memory that Kevin Durant ever had of him. Beasley recalls meeting Durant and confessing to the pizza heist. Where I grew up wasn't the best place ever to grow up, he said of his hometown of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. I didn't know when I was going to eat the next time. Martin invited Beasley back, though, even though he did steal the team's lunch and was terrible in practice. From there, he was kind of the team's jokester, Durant said. Everyone just gravitated toward Mike. He didn't play much in the beginning, but one game in the championship went to triple overtime, and he had 20 points and 20 rebounds. After that, he was a monster. The two would soon become almost inseparable, with Beasley almost living with Durant during those years. He always went to Durant's house every day and stayed till late, and they became brothers in a true sense. In fact, Durant still says they're brothers till today, especially since almost the same thing happened to them throughout their life. Beasley's mother was a single mother of four children and had it pretty rough raising them all alone. When the boys were teenagers, Beasley's mother would drop him off at Durant's house for breakfast every day at 6.30 a.m. Durant and Beasley used to take the bus to school and then play basketball in the evenings. Durant's mom quickly became a second mother to Beasley. He was a good kid, Durant's mother Wanda Pratt said of Beasley. He was a good time. He enjoyed having a good time. His demeanor is not as solemn as Kevin's. He was always courteous. Mike was never a problem for me. Maybe it's because of how close they were. Maybe it's just plain fate. But the two friends would dedicate their lives to pursuing a basketball goal, with Durant blazing a path for the younger Beasley to follow. During their freshman years, they would both attend at National Christian Academy in Fort Washington, Maryland. As juniors, they'd attend Virginia's prestigious Oak Hill Academy, where they'd build a national reputation and become prominent collegiate recruits. They'd transfer to different high schools closer to home as seniors. They'd be named the MVP of the McDonald's All-American Game. They'd go to Big 12 schools, Durant going to Texas and Beasley going to K-State. They'd be named Conference Freshman of the Year. They'd be out of school after a year. It's almost like there was a glitch in the matrix with these two. They literally made these same decisions till they got picked for the NBA. Durant was selected second overall in the 2007 draft, and Beasley was selected second overall in the 2008 draft. Both young men had realized their dreams of playing in the NBA, and it was time to get to work. Both players had relatively successful rookie seasons, and while Durant has evolved into one of the league's best players, Beasley last appeared in the NBA with the Los Angeles Lakers in the 2018-2019 season. In 2019, he traveled to China to play. There are a couple of reasons why Beasley's career did not go as well as Durant's. While most people will say that Beasley was responsible for his career imploding, it really isn't as straightforward as that, and here's why. When Kevin Durant joined the Seattle Supersonics, the franchise was just rebuilding its team, and they decided to rebuild the team around Durant. 
That means he got the best of everything, and everyone coming into the team was brought to assist him. They were also not title contenders, so the pressure on him was way less than it would have been if he joined a more serious team. No disrespect to the Sonics. Now, Beasley, on the other hand, joined the Miami Heat at a time when it was filled with veterans who had just won a championship a few seasons ago and was led by prime Dwayne Wade. Now, adding a young talent to a veteran title-winning team is great on paper, but in reality, it's a much different story. Beasley was always going to play second fiddle, and in a team with much more on the line, there was no way Beasley was going to have the same freedom to grow that Durant had. In fact, Beasley was not even a starter for the Heat. He came off the bench a lot, averaged about 25 minutes per game, and then made his numbers pale in comparison. Plus, he was 19, and it was Miami. For an easygoing guy who likes a good time, it was a bad combination, especially since he had no one to guide him. Durant, on the other hand, was in Seattle, and he had to deal with so much rain that he barely left his house. The combination of parties, wrong media attention, and lack of playtime led to Beasley not reaching the kind of heights that was expected of him. He had a relatively good NBA career, but for a number two pick who was on par with Durant on talent alone, he kind of flopped. Kind of is, okay, it's an understatement, but let's just go with that. Today, Durant and Beasley are still close friends, even if they're not as close as they were as kids. They've both had their ups and downs and they've battled their way through it, but their friendship seems like it will last forever. In a recent interview where ESPN brought the two of them together, Durant said, Basketball is what brought us all together. Then you started to see the person. I started to see what he liked to do. I started to see his family. I started to see what he was passionate about outside of basketball. And the same with me. When we see it now, no matter what our careers are, no matter what I do on the court, no matter what he does on the basketball court, we're in a position where we can take care of our families forever, and we reach the goal. A lot of people don't reach their goal in life. At a high level, we reach that goal. And we're going to be legends in our neighborhood forever just cause. I'll take that. Everything that's happening now is a cherry on top. Looks like whatever happens, these two friends will still have their backs off the court. And that brings us to the end of today's video, so if you did enjoy this, make sure to drop a like below, subscribe to the channel, and put on notifications to keep getting awesome content like this. And we'll see you in the next one.